28-hall for ending my engagement over his lap? I-28 male was with my now ex fiance 27 female for four years now. Proposed last year and set to marry later this year. We've been living together for two and a half years. Important to know that prior to this relationship, I have been in a relationship with a previous ex who was physically abusive. My previous ex would kick, punch, slap, and throw things at me when she was angry with me, which was pretty much all the time. Or if things didn't go her way, knowing damn well that I would never hit her back. After getting out of that relationship, physical violence of any sort has been an instant deal breaker for me. My ex fiance knew this. Fast forward to a last week, we got into a disagreement that turned into a heated argument. We both said some stupid things to one another, but one thing particularly struck a nerve with her, and out of the blue, she slapped me hard across the face. We've gotten into heated arguments before, even after drinking, but she's never slapped me before. This time, we were both stone cold sober. After she slapped me, I just told her that I'm not going to marry her anymore and to consider our relationship over. I slept in the spare bedroom that night, and the next day I went to stay at my sister's place until I could figure out my next moves. I've contacted all my groomsmen, family, and friends and told them that the wedding is most likely going to be cancelled. I did speak to my ex-fiancé since then. She called me and did apologize for slapping me and asked me to reconsider. I told her no, she knew what my boundary was, and I told her that if the roles were reversed, she would have called cops and pressed charges against me. She told me that's different. I told her that I knew it was different, and I would react more harshly towards a man that hit my sister than a woman who hit my brother. But that doesn't mean that she shouldn't face any consequences at all. Ex-fiancé then turned from apologetic to angry and berated me for throwing our relationship away over just a slap. I told her that it all started with just a slap with my ex and hung up. Since then, I've been bombarded with texts and calls from her friends and family, telling me that I'm overreacting and that I'm ruining her life since she makes less money than me and can't afford the apartment by herself. I've agreed to let her stay in the apartment and pay my portion of the rent until the lease runs out, or she's able to make new arrangements, whichever comes first. I've also offered to give her some money to pay for a portion of the wedding deposit. Am I the a-hole here? Now for the top comments. Nope, and you should be proud of yourself for not agreeing to remain in a relationship with her. I'm with you 100%. My father was like this. Mom was as well, but nothing like my dad. The last straw for my mom was when my sister and I got hurt bad by stopping him from hurting our mom. All over missing dirty white sock. My mom stayed for over 20 years. My dad died when I was 17. My ex was a social worker, and you'd be surprised how many of her cases were men. Most people don't have it in them to physically hit a loved one, hence why the harmed partner is always left feeling so confused. But the ones that do almost always escalate. Whatever that is, gender norms don't factor into it. Good for you. You deserve more than this. You deserve more than someone who says it will never happen again until it does. She overstepped a major boundary that happens to be a crime and doesn't see anything wrong with it. She said that's different, which means that she doesn't see anything wrong with it and is willing to do it again. You have been through too much to do it all again. Stand your ground, keep your value, boundaries and that high bar. Best of luck to you. Yeah, that part really bothered me. The that's different. I'm a woman, and I absolutely hate that nonsense. I had a lesbian roommate and her girlfriend used to beat her. It was constant fighting and then making up. That nonsense is toxic and he shouldn't put up with it. Another woman here, I agree. I hate the it's different attitude when a woman assaults a man. All genders should be held accountable the same way. Next story. Am I the a-hole for refusing to help cook after my wife canceled my catering order? This weekend, my wife and I are hosting a retirement party for my mom. We are expecting around 20 people. We are splitting the cost of food and beverages with my brother and his wife. During the planning process, I told everyone that I wanted to get the event catered so that no one had to spend a bunch of time in the kitchen cooking for 20 people. Everyone agreed this was a good idea, and I told them I would take care of it and placed a catering order last weekend. My wife and sister-in-law have been handling the logistics. And when I told them the cost of the catering, about $300, my sister-in-law made a comment about that being too high. 
I told her it comes to about $15 per person, which is basically getting everyone fed for the price of a fast food combo meal, but with much better food. Sister-in-law said that we could save a lot of money if we just cooked ourselves instead. The reason cost is an issue for sister-in-law is that they just welcomed their second child two months ago and I guess they are feeling a bit pinched financially. I explained to sister-in-law again my reasoning behind wanting it catered because I don't want anyone to be burdened with cooking for a large group and that I will gladly pay a bit more than our fair share if that makes her feel better. That seemed to ease her mind. Unbeknownst to me, sister-in-law and my wife continued talking about it and sister-in-law had taken it upon herself to plan an entire meal that we would cook ourselves for half the price of the catering order. Without discussing anything with me, they decided to cancel the catering order and just cook ourselves. My wife told me this last night. When my wife told me their plan, I asked them who would be doing the cooking, and she said me and her because sister-in-law and my brother would probably have to be watching their kids. I told her that since she and sister-in-law made this decision on their own, I'm not going to help with the cooking at all. I said I would gladly watch the kids while my wife and sister-in-law cook the entire meal for everyone. She told me that I'm being a jerk and sexist if I think that I can just refuse to help and make the women do all the cooking. I told her that she and sister-in-law are the ones who went behind my back and canceled the catering order, so they get to be the ones who figured the new plan out. But I'm not helping. She said that sister-in-law was concerned about the cost and that sister-in-law confessed she was worried about money. I told her that's exactly why I had offered to pay more, but apparently that wasn't enough and that sister-in-law and my wife just needed to be in control of this for some reason. She told me I need to be more understanding of my brother and sister-in-law's financial situation and that cooking isn't that big of a deal, especially when we can all save some money. I told her that since it's not a big deal, she and sister-in-law will have no problem spending as much time as it takes to cook for everyone while I will entertain the rest of the guests. She told me I'm being an unreasonable a-hole for not helping. Not the a-hole. She cancelled the catering order, so she gets to cook. Has nothing to do with her being female. She and sister-in-law made a choice that affects everyone else. Exactly this. OP, you're not the a-hole, but your wife is being a major one. I understand if she wants to do what's best for your sister-in-law, but she needed to discuss it with you and not make the decision and then expect to force you to help out. This is on her and sister-in-law to take care of now. Weirdly though, their decision wasn't even what was best for sister-in-law. It just compounded all the problems. No time to cook because kids. No money to cook the big meal because kids. No time to themselves for sister-in-law and brother-in-law because working and kids. Now they get to spend all their free time cooking after work. Easy, not the a-hole. Your plan was just fine. Your wife and sister-in-law made this decision by themselves. They can cook. That was rude as heck for your wife to basically volunteer you to cook for 20 people. You offered to pay more due to your sister-in-law's financial situation, which was a perfectly reasonable solution. Your wife is also out of line for bringing sexism into this when it has nothing to do with it. Cooking for 20 people is a huge undertaking. Ridiculous. The sexism accusation was a cheap shot and would have set me off if I was OP. First thing that popped into my head was to ask her why she's being so sexist thinking two grown men, one an experienced father, aren't capable of watching the kids. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not helping my wife with our newborn at night because I work early mornings and for asking my mother-in-law to leave our house? This is my first time posting here and I'm really needing some outside perspective. I'm a male 34 and my wife is female 32. We've been married for six fantastic years and we recently had our first child, a beautiful girl who's now six weeks old. Things have been tumultuous lately and I'm not sure if I'm the one being unreasonable. I work a physically demanding job in construction that starts at 6 a.m. This means I have to wake up at 4.30 a.m. to get ready and commute. My job needs me to be alert as any lapse could lead to serious accidents. My wife is on a year-long maternity leave and has the responsibility of caring for our baby throughout the day. Here's the problem. Our newborn, as they do, wakes up several times throughout the night. My wife has been insisting that I help with these late-night feedings and changes, but I've explained to her that a lack of sleep could seriously jeopardize my performance at work and my own safety. 
To add more drama into the mix, my mother-in-law has moved in with us to help with the baby. However, her idea of help often involves criticizing my wife's parenting, which only adds to her stress and dictating how we should run our household. She's also been siding with my wife on the nighttime assistance issue, making me feel ganged up in my own home. I help as much as I can when I'm off work. I take on most of the cooking, cleaning, and tend to the baby as soon as I'm home till she sleeps. But the continuous pressure and lack of sleep are becoming unbearable. After a particularly heated argument, I told my mother-in-law that if she wasn't going to contribute positively, she'd need to find somewhere else to stay. My wife was upset, saying I was out of line for kicking out her mother. I feel bad, but I also think that the current situation isn't sustainable. So Reddit, am I the a-hole for refusing to assist with our newborn at night due to the nature of my job and for asking my intrusive mother-in-law to leave? Edit. I should also mention that I have two stepsons from my wife's previous relationship. In addition to my work and the baby duties, I also pick them up from school, help them with their homework and take them to their sports practices after I get off work. It's not just about the newborn, we have a whole family to take care of. So it's not like I'm lounging around sipping a beer post-work. Balancing all these responsibilities is what makes the situation so challenging. Thanks for the feedback though. Now for the top comments. I've been married 28 years, two kids 25 and 15. My husband also worked construction during the younger years and we ran our own construction business as they got older. Having a newborn is hard. It takes everything out of you and can be extremely stressful. I always took it upon myself to be sure and be up with the baby during the night so that he was able to sleep and be ready for those early morning work hours. When he came home, he helped me with the babies, and if I needed it, I took a nap while he did that. I stayed home and I did as much as I could to make things easier for him, as I worked a high-stress, physically demanding job outside of home. But we always made sure that each of our needs was being met and communicated with each other. This is the key. What are your needs? What are your limits? What do each of you expect from each other? Being tired after a baby clouds and everything can be super emotional for everyone, especially the mom. It would help if you guys can talk this out and lay out your terms, so to speak. Get a schedule and stick to it so that you both are comfortable and feel heard. The mother issue is a whole other thing. Sometimes it can be helpful and sometimes a real nightmare. I wish you guys the best. I guess my judgment is everyone needs to be open and have more grace for each other during this time. The only thing I have to add is it only takes a few minutes to change a diaper and give the baby to your wife for a feeding, which takes much longer. You can contribute this way and still get enough sleep. You may only get up two or three times in the night for five minutes. It's not bad at all. Huh? You think waking up three times a night for five minutes will give you a good night's sleep slash rest? Weekends maybe, but doing that when he needs to work the next day for extended period of time is a surefire way to get into an accident as a construction worker. I don't know why people keeps ignoring that he works in an accident-prone sector. There's no negotiating with sleep in vocations like these. It's the same with truckers and surgeons, and whatever job that needs the utmost concentration, or else you die or someone else die. Everyone sucks here. You don't get to toss out your mother-in-law, who was apparently there at your wife's request. Under normal circumstances, I would say it's two yeses for any house guest. But this period of time postpartum is an exception to that rule. Your mother-in-law should be helping with the nighttime feedings. At this point in time, that's the main help she should provide. This is where the pressure needs to be applied. Your wife is frustrated and overwhelmed, and dealing with a six-week baby is not a walk in the park. I know from experience. But sleep deprivation for someone working a physical, dangerous job with a long commute is not a solution. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not throwing my husband a birthday party? My 35 female had my son a few weeks ago. My husband, 40 male, has been a huge help with taking care of the house, cooking and cleaning. I let him know frequently how much I appreciate everything that he does. My family also helps with taking care of our son. My husband's 40th birthday was this past weekend and I made it clear he didn't want a huge party. So, I invited a few of his closest friends and family to go out for a nice dinner at his favorite restaurant. A few people couldn't make it and it ended up being a very small dinner. I was exhausted the night before as the baby was up until 3 a.m. 
I did notice that my husband was quiet during dinner and hardly touched his food. When we got home after dinner, my husband looks at me with an angry expression on his face. He starts screaming that I ruined his 40th birthday, that him telling me he doesn't want a huge party meant that he did. I was so tired that I just burst into tears and haven't spoken a single word to him except when it's about the baby. I'm starting to feel like the a-hole for not making my husband's 40th birthday a better one. That him telling me he doesn't want a huge party meant that he did. This is some teenage girl kind of nonsense. He's a grown man. He can communicate what he wants or do it himself. Not the a-hole. Exactly. Opie is not a mind reader. Adults can verbalize their needs slash wants. And if they can't, they cannot be pissy when they are misinterpreted. A newborn and a 40-year-old infant. Poor you. You are not at fault for not knowing that not wanting a big party means wanting a big party. Your husband is a grown man, a full maturity and should know how to ask properly for what he wants. He should also know that people cannot read minds. Not a hole. Depending on how long ago a few weeks is, she may not even be allowed to drive to even get stuff for a party. I know I wasn't supposed to drive for almost a month, but honestly, after a couple of weeks, I had to because I didn't have any more help. He is a grown adult. He could have used his actual words and told you what he really wanted. He didn't, so that is on him. You did a lovely thing. My 30th was a week after having my second. I could barely function, so we stayed in and just had tacos and it was fine. Not what I expected for a milestone birthday, but definitely what was needed for those circumstances and it was nice. Not the a-hole, you just gave birth. He can plan his own birthday party. Absolutely. Even if he communicated that he wanted a big party, she had a baby a few weeks ago. Absolutely not on her to plan.